When we are trying to find the critical numbers of a function, sometimes we may have to set the denominator to be zero, but sometimes we don't. When do we do what? Well, don't worry, I'm going to make that clear for you guys with these two examples, so check this out. First, when we are trying to find the critical numbers of a function, we have to pay attention to two cases. The first case is that we are looking for the number c so that the derivative of the function at that c value is equal to zero. And this right here is the first case. And this right here usually does not cause any confusions. So let's do this one right here first. We need the derivative, so let's go ahead and differentiate this. We have 1 over x squared plus x minus 2, but we don't have to use the quotient rule because we can just write this as parentheses with this inside, x squared plus x minus 2, and then raise to the negative 1 power so that we can just bring the power to the front and then minus 1. Use the power rule and then don't forget the chain rule. So here we go. The derivative of this is negative and then we have x squared plus x minus 2 and then minus 1 minus 2 is minus 2. Minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. And then we differentiate the inside because of the chain rule. And the derivative of this is 2x plus 1. It has two terms, so be sure we use the parentheses. And now, because we have the negative exponent, let's bring this down to the bottom. So on the top, we have this, which is just negative, right? Negative times 2x and negative times 1. So it's negative 2x minus 1 over this on the bottom, which is x squared plus x minus 2. And then to the positive 2 power, because I brought it down to the bottom already. So as you can see, this is a derivative with fraction and uh, do we have to set the bottom to be zero well you will see but for now if we're just looking for this case we just have to set the derivative to be zero and when we have a fraction that's equal to zero all we have to do is make the top to be zero so the first case is just negative 2x minus 1 we set it to be zero and then of course solve this real quick minus one right here, so we just add one on both sides and then divide it by negative on two on both sides. So x will be negative one over two. Yes, all right. So this right here is the first critical number and usually people have no problem with that. Cool. Now let's take a look at the second one. We have the cube root of x squared plus x minus two. And you see, I actually use the same inside function on purpose, you'll see. Here we have a cube root. We can rewrite this as parentheses with x squared plus x minus 2 inside and then raise that to the 1 over 3 power. And then we can use the power rule, bring this to the front and then minus 1. We get the derivative being equal to 1 third times x squared plus x minus 2. And then 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 third. And then don't forget to use the chain rule. Here, multiply by the derivative of the inside, and that will give us yeah, the same thing like that over there, which is 2x plus 1. And again, this time we have this raised to a negative exponent, so let's bring that down to the bottom, and uh, we just have this on the top. So we are getting 2x plus 1 over 3, and then we have x squared plus x minus 2, and then raise that to the 2 over 3 power. To find the c so that the derivative is equal to zero, we just again set this to be zero. And this right here is the same situation. We are going to put 2x plus 1 to be zero, and then minus 1 on both sides and divide it by 2 on both sides. In fact, we get the same exact answer like what we had over there, like negative 1 half. So this right here is a cn for this function. No problem with that. All right? So now, what do we do next though? Yeah, this is the second case. First case was the c value, so that the derivative there is equal to zero. And now the second case is that, I'll just put on or, the derivative at the c value cannot exist. So I will just say this right here is DNE, right? Which stands for does not exist. And when we have a fraction, to make this doesn't exist, what we have to look at is the bottom. And we just have to make sure that we set it equal to zero. And both of them have the fractions, like this right here and that right here. So we shall set both of them equal to zero on the bottom so that we can find out the derivative doesn't exist, right? 
If we do that for the first one, then we will get x squared plus x minus 2. Square, make it equal to 0, and then we can just take the square root on both sides. Plus minus 0 is still 0, doesn't matter. And then we just have x squared plus x minus 2 equal to 0, and then factor it. x plus 2 times x minus 1 equal to 0. And we can see that x is equal to negative 2 right here, and then x is equal to 1 right here. All right? And uh, if we do the same thing right here, we will have 3 times x squared plus x minus 2 raised to the 2 third power. We make it equal to 0. Same thing, just look at the inside, which is x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Factor it. x plus 2 times x minus 1 equal to 0. And we get x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to positive 1. So, they should have the same answers, right? Like negative 1 half, negative 2 and 1 for both functions. No. In fact, for this one, we actually didn't have to do this at all. So, this right here, they are actually not critical numbers for this function. And the reason is because negative 2 and 1, they are actually not in the domain of the original function. So, even though, yes, negative 2 and 1 will make the derivative doesn't exist, but they are not even in the original function, so you don't really have to consider it. However, negative 2 and 1, they are in the domain of this function, because you can put negative 2 into the original, and you will end up with cube root of 0, which is a legitimate 0, so that works. And then if you put 1 in here, you will also end up with 0, and that's also legitimate. So in fact, these two are critical numbers for the blue function as well. So, in this case, we do have to set the denominator to be 0 to find out where the derivative doesn't exist, and we found we have negative 2 and 1. Alright, so I just want to make a note that they are, they are in the domain of the original function. So, that's why we do have to include them. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the first one, we only have x equals negative 1 half for the critical number. And then for the second one, we have three of them. The first one is negative 1 half, where the derivative there is equal to 0. And then the next one, and then the last one, negative 2 and 1, they are the numbers that will make the derivative doesn't exist. And we have to consider them because we do have them originally from the function. Hopefully this is clear. If you need more examples on finding critical numbers, check out my playlist and I'll see you guys over there.